Toronto population is growing, and so are the condos. Are they related? Toronto population growth and condos. Let's take a look. Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto Real Estate Agent Mortgage Broker. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Toronto population growth and condos. Watch carefully. Very, very important video. Okay, this is today's Toronto Star, January 31st, the last day of January in 2020. We made it through all of January. And the very cover online says the population of the Toronto area will hit 8 million in the next 10 years. It's make or break time. Are we ready? Of course, the main issue is, uh, is housing and public transport. Main issues. Let me zoom into this picture for you just so you understand what they're talking about. So you see this is the skyline that we have today. Here's a CN Tower. There's, there's about 65 stories right here. Those are more or less in the 60s. And you can see here buildings designed in 80s, 90s, and well over 100 stories. Okay, so we're getting a lot of people coming in Toronto. Just endless stream of people coming in Toronto. And everyone needs a bed. Um, you need a bed. I need a bed. They need a bed. Everyone needs roof. Everyone needs shelter. Everyone needs a place to, to live and to sleep. And, of course, we need public transportation. And we need all the civic services water sewage electric all the services but our focus is real estate investment and that's what i'm going to focus in on today so watch carefully what, what the toronto star is saying and they're starting starting to more they're starting a series of a toronto 2030 is the population of toronto is going to grow now this is the thing i've been talking about to you for a long time the Toronto population is growing and growing and growing. There's various estimates. I've seen anywhere from 65,000 a year to 150,000 a year. I'm probably thinking there's, there's probably like well over 100,000 a year coming to the GTA every year. And that means that even, even, if, even if one person only needs half a bed, means two people share a bed, we still need to add about you know, 30 to 50,000 beds every year to Toronto. Now, we already know that we're only adding about 18,000. So that means that the musical chairs, what are we gonna do with the 20 or 30,000 people that don't have beds? Well, we need to build more. We need to build more. Obviously, it's a complex issue. I'm not gonna get into all the civic uh, issues here. You know, I grew up in construction. I, I understand the topic very well. Obviously, our public transport is in sham. Um, <laughs> I like to go block to you and look, look at the TTC news, but here is, here's the city of the future. This is square one in Mississauga. This is a plan that was released earlier this week. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I would love to see those streets buried in. You know, it'll be nice not to have any cars, just just street cars running, and all the streets under. But you know, I wasn't a designer. I don't know what they. Anyway, that's what it is, and you can see it's a lot of tall buildings. Some of them look more like um, office building, and some of them look more residential buildings. A lot of us are going to be working just like me from home, or from wherever you are. And most of the people I know these days no longer work in an office. A lot of them just work from their laptop wherever they are. Okay. So uh, this is back to the Jane Jacobs dream. If, if you know Jane Jacobs, but a lady lived in Toronto, and she was a proponent of localization of urban living. So every, every she said basically every neighborhood becomes a little self-sustaining village. So each neighborhood, you should be able to live in this neighborhood. You, should, you don't even have to live. There's school there. There's food. There's a doctor. There's all the services you'd need to live. Okay, so that's how we're going to see. And that's why I did an article already last year about master plan communities the future of living for most of us is in master plan communities now if you're one of the lucky ones to have a home that's great to have a house that's great but once you have a house those prices of the house are going to are going to go high 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 the municipality is going to jack up the taxes on houses i believe and of course the carrying costs on the house is going to be more because those houses are going to double and double and double and you're going to need a car or you need to transport yourself somewhere from your home to your work to, to your place of work or to the school for your kids. If you live in this one master plan community, you just walk over because the school is right there and the, and the kindergarten is right there and daycare is right there. And you're probably working, serving the community. So each community can actually survive mostly by serving itself, which is amazing. And that's kind of what we wanna, how we wanna reach, I think, as a society. Um, but what would that do to condo prices? Obviously, the more people come in town and we know the immigration policy of Canada is to bring mostly people with a lot of money or they come to study various uh, uh, topics, subjects that are dictated and the Canadian government says, you know, you get so many points if you study this subject and so many points you get to study this subject. So the, the, the immigration policies are trying to make sure that the best people come to Canada and we can continue generating f positive financial uh, outlook for ourselves. That's very, very important. Okay, so so far so good. We've done really well. And this is what you're looking at. And that's why I've been telling you 
you know, forget about forget about the downtown, forget about the core. I mean, it's really nice, but it's just going to be another downtown, another core. I mean, what's wrong with this core? This core can house just as many just as many people, and probably in, in better better uh, better condition than you go to the Toronto core, which is 200 years old. It's got it's got no roads. It's got you know Young Street. It's a lane, each la one lane per way. Here you're looking at maybe four lanes per way, uh, plus. I think that looks like a, like a train tracks. So there's a train, maybe there's a bus service. Everything will be electric, of course. You're not going to be driving because the car will be self-driving. It's going to take you around. <clears throat> but you're still going to be close to where you want to be. So if you want to live in Square One, Mississauga, you know, you have lots of options to live there. You want to live in Galleria, Galleria Mall condos, which is a smaller version of this, but it's a master plan community. Why not? You know, on and on and on. Okay, uh, let me try something here. UrbanRealtyTron.com show you something gotta scroll back a bit Toronto's best three best investor condo projects 2019 2020 so I made a video about this and I'm gonna go back to it over and over again the well by Tridel I chose the number one now this is expensive project in today's money it's about 13 fourteen hundred dollars a foot <coughs> but today will be 15 uh, tomorrow will be 15 16 17 and two thousand dollar foot and it's got offices it's got a big mall with uh, with like a, like a little market in there like a little uh, like a covered market, the St. Lawrence kind of thing, and they're probably going to have a, a bunch of maybe 50 or 80 little food vendors and stores, and I'm sure there'll be uh, a doctor's clinic and a lot of services you need. And some of the buildings are commercial, so they house, I know the Shopify has quarter million square feet there, so that's easy, a thousand engineers, <coughs> each making tons of money, so they can afford it. And you can see here the master plan, and this, this is where Toyota on front used to be, and the Globe and Mail building used to be, okay? Right here. <laughs> All right, uh, this is Galleria Mall. So this is um, up on Dufferin. Very nice. Started the sale started about 963 a foot. Now they're well over a thousand a foot, but it's still, in my opinion, very very good. And it's still 30 and 40 percent less than this. Okay, so you may get the engineers that the top earner come in living here because they can afford it, and then the next ones <laughs> will come here because the housing cost is slightly less. So that's good. And you can see, lot, they're all beautiful. I mean, they all basically offer you kind of a, of a self-sustaining community. It's got a park. It's on Dufferin, so you, you can get places. Very nice. Okay, look at this. Oh, back. Okay, so we sold uh, building one and two, mostly sold. There's a few uh, two and three bedroom units. And the rest of the buildings will come out. And I'm sure they'll sell out just as quickly, whatever price that it's going to be dictated. And then there's Crosstown which is also a massive community. Okay, so right now they're selling one cross town, they're selling these, but there are more. It's, it's a full-on community. It's got all the services you'd need, so you can literally just stay in that community and you got everything. You got the daycare, you got the schools, you got transportation, and you got very nice floor plans. And you can get these floor plans for you know, a thousand bucks a foot, give or take. Very nice floor plans. The kitchen is not on the side wall. You know, this is a kitchen that I like. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep talking about these floor plans because it's very, very important for you to buy quality and to buy good floor plans. And Crosstown did a really good job on these kitchens. You can see the kitchen does not extend to the window. It's very, very important. If you see a unit is long and narrow, the kitchen extends all the way to the window. Think about it twice. Now, it, it may be worth your while if, if, you, if you're in a special area. That it's very, very expensive and you've got to be there. That's okay. But otherwise, this is a great unit. You know, it's wider than it is. You got a little foyer, and then here's here's the kitchen, so you can do all your cooking here, and you actually have living space, even though it's a small unit. You have actually living space. It makes sense, okay? So you, all these floor plans are all there. You can you can go back to Urban Realty Toronto. I posted all the floor plans. All the information is here, and this, of course, uh, right by the Science Center, and it's valid. All these things are valid, okay? So that's what you need to know. And a lot of people are having a hard time understanding why prices are going up. Well, they're going up because supply and demand. There's so many people coming into town. So we are building 10 years ahead, 20 years ahead, 50 years ahead. You know, this is a project that didn't come overnight. Obviously, this was designed for a long, long time. And the people that, the team that designed this, you know, that includes transportation engineers and planners and includes, of course, architects and builders and everyone that needs to be how do we run this? How do we run this entire thing? I mean, imagine the strain on the transport 
terms of station system in there. And the po you need power to all these buildings. You need water, you need sewage, you need the services, and the flow of people, and the sun. You know, you know they do a sun study to make sure that the shade, look at the shade, okay? So it doesn't mean that there's not gonna be any shade. Sometimes you do a, a, a shade or a sun study, and the conclusion is it'll be a shade all day long, and they still build it. It doesn't mean they're not gonna build it, but they wanna know what it's gonna be like. So they. So they can run the program and they can get kind of a, of a render showing you what's going on. And that looks really, really nice. And usually in these renders, they place the sun, you know, the, the, the CAD program will place the sun and can run you the sun and do a, a shade study for you. Very, very important. Here's a little local market. Okay, very nice. So this is not downtown, but it's its own downtown. And you, you, can, you can anticipate, and, and there'll be maybe slightly less pollution here and so on. And you can anticipate, and this is at least 10 years to build. I mean, that's so much. I don't know how many units they put in there, but probably 20,000, say. If you think about 20,000 units, that's still not a lot if we're getting 100,000 people coming to the city. Okay, let's say it's 50,000. Okay, so that's only good for six months' supply. So how many we need? <laughs> let, let's say you can put 100,000 in this thing. Okay, that, no, that, that, that's, a, that's a township. That's a small town. Let's say we build enough for 100,000. That means we need to build one of these every single year. You can think, you think we can build one of these every single year? I don't think so. I don't think we've seen anywhere that actually Toronto can house 100,000 year like that every year. We cannot build 100,000 condos. We can only build 18 or 20,000. So yes, yesterday's video, I showed you there's a lot of vacant condos at the moment. But generally speaking, you know, even if 4,000 condos, you see here I came with 3381. Can I improve the, no, it's already maxed. You know, this is yesterday's 3381. So I'm just going to let it run. Um, even even if <clears throat> we have 4,000 4, condos vacant at the moment, it doesn't mean a lot because there's still so many people looking for a home. So it's it's a temporary blip, in my opinion. A lot of people have a lot of problems. Just, they just cannot fathom. They psychologically cannot grow this, which is totally fine. I can and you can, that's why we're watching this video, that's why we're looking at this thing. And what's going to happen, uh, by 2030, even we won't be the same, not of the arrival of a million new faces, lifted greater Toronto population to 8 million. So it's 2020 now, so that means in the next 9 years and 11 months, a million people. That's 100,000 a year, and I guarantee you that's an understatement. I would say there'll be a million five. Or a million two okay so so if you are buying an investment if you're thinking about your pension and clearly those pension funds are gonna erode and erode and erode and a lot of people that saved and worked hard all their lives are not gonna have any pension it's just like everyone knows that okay so you buy a condo and you're gonna get what you can you're gonna get the best you can right now and if you want to get the best you can right now go to shawnacondosforsale.com and you have three options you have the option to buy a pre-construction condo, so they're going to be a little more expensive, but you only have to put 15% down or 20% down, staggered over usually 6 to 12 months. So you go here, click on the box, the project, and then you can run through all these projects. It's just endless. It's just an endless amount. And then you can, you can search it. You can slice and dice it by project name, by developer, by occupancy date, you know. Uh, what's coming in 2024 in the system? Okay, here you find some. So that's good. And now you, you go, you'll see, I want to invest. You know, I have 120,000 cash and I'm looking to get 600 square feet somewhere. What, what can I get? What can I get today for $100,000 or $200,000 and 600 square feet? Let's find the best possible investment we can for my budget. Okay. And you can see that investors are very sophisticated. Okay. This is across the street from me here. And this was sold starting at 1500 a foot, 1600 a foot, and now it's up to $2,000 a foot. And it's its own little community. It's a kaposh little community. And it's just throw stone away from the Tridel one. So this project and the Tridel one will be the premier projects west of Spadina, literally just west of Spadina, between Spadina and Bathurst, which is the new fancy downtown. This is the New Yorkville, my friend. The New Yorkville is the King Toronto project and the Tridel project. That's what you want to be if you can afford it. Okay, if you can be at 488, if you can go in uh, 488 University, you can be there. That's also good. Okay, so that's your first option. The second option 
So the first option is to buy new construction, invest there. You want to know what's going on, you can either sign to urbanrealtytoronto.com, the investor insider will pop, put your name, your email, your mobile, you get a lot of information. And also I've been posting, there's over 2,000 articles here I posted throughout the years. If you want the back-to-back, -back, just step-by-step, -step, how to buy Toronto condo, watch this video, read the simple article. I add an article every week, lots of videos here. If you want to flip your assignment, some people want to sell their assignments now or want to sell what they have because they already bought 10 or 20 or 40 years ago or maybe they bought an older condo which is 40 years old even if they bought it only 5 or 10 years ago and you can see how the condo fees are starting to increase and you're not competing so it may be a good time right now to improve your position especially if I'm looking at a million people coming to the city and if a million people come into the city, I want to be in the best buildings I can. So yes, cost of selling will cost you a little bit, but in the long run, wouldn't that make more sense? Let's say I'm thinking 20 years ahead and my building is already 20 years old. In 20 years, it's going to be 40 years old. I'm going to compete with all these new buildings. Even the buildings that came out now, they'll be 20 years old, but I'm a 40-year-old building. There's so much difference. A lot more efficiency, better construction technology, on and on and on. So you may want to improve your positions. That's the chess game of life. Improve your position, okay? Um, go to the Treb, go to Market Watch, and you can hit the quick view. I think these are the stats. They haven't added 2019. Probably going to come uh, next week, first week of February. They probably update that. But you can see the trajectory. It came up a bit here, but 2019 is going to be up, probably up here, probably more than 2017. The highest on record probably so far, this is the price, average price for Toronto here is $822,000. That's pulled a lot by the detached home, of course, the most expensive category and the most rare category. That's what most expensive. But condos are catching up. And 2018, we had a bit of a, of a drop. So if you bought resale in 2018, very good. You've done well. And 2019 is going to blow you out of the water. So here's year over year. You can see the number of transactions has increased. There's also more product on the market because we built more. And the seasonally adjusted about the same. Uh, the year over year selling price, it was 750 in uh, December 2018. It was almost 840. So that's 12% up between 1 and 2nd December. And December is not the highest month of the year. So you're going to see, if you look at seasonally adjusted, the actual average price is 871 that just happened two months ago or a month ago okay so we're inching towards the 900,000 average for the GTA so get your act together if you can invest I would say give it a good thought give me a call get your information right and get some action going because a million people are coming to Toronto one million people are coming and they're all gonna be living in these cutout condos <laughs> but you know it's gonna have to be built and it will be built and the city is doing it you know I my job here is to help you make the best investment decisions and to serve you to serve the condo buyers I'm not gonna argue with you about too much about the prices in the city a lot of people in the comments trying to get me into that I'm not really interested in this kind of conversation so much I'm more interested in serving the investors and focusing on investors uh, M City in um, in Mississauga also a fantastic project. Your know, Urban Capital is a very good developer. They have uh, David Mark have 20 plus years of experience. They know what they're doing, and these are master plan communities. That's where you want to be, master plan communities. Okay, these are still you can find units here for a thousand bucks a foot. Now people are waving. Ah, I don't want to be in square one. You don't want to be in square one. Look what's going on. Look what's going on. This is not going to come at 800 bucks a foot. This is going to come well over $1,000 a foot. Well over. Well over. So if you can get a deal here, maybe you should consider it. Okay? This is what's happening. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. Okay? If you can afford this, or if you can upgrade yourself, even if you had something now, and you sell it, and it's not the best, at some point, you're going to have to upgrade. You know, you got to go to the dentist. you got to go to the garage with your car. you got to upgrade everything in your life in order to keep up uh, because population is growing. Toronto is growing. The, everything is expanding. We are in expansion. We are in a period of expansion. All right, my friends. The city is growing. If you want more information, torontocondosforsale.com. For pre-construction, hit this button here or go to menu listing pre-construction condos this will give you 
there's a list and there's also a map listing five, I think. Oh, that's a search there's a way to do it on the map residential search let me see Toronto you can put Mississauga here Vaughn whatever property type I say condo listing status for sale search watch this okay and here residential commercial pre-construction so here's the pre-construction zoom in and start finding out what's going on and you can start getting units okay and then all you got to do is like you'll see I'm interested what do you got on this what's the information here is this a good investment is this not a good investment should I buy here should I not people can have all these ideas why they should buy somewhere or not buy somewhere that's totally fine at the end of the day we all want the same thing which is longevity you want longevity you want quality you want livability so it's important to buy something that has long-term longevity you know i'm not a flipper i mean I've, I've done flips i know how to do flips you want to flip we can flip some of the opportunity comes and we flip that's totally fine but at the end of the day i always buy long term i buy long term because i know that i'm safe and that's what i want i just want to you know, nordic condo was an amazing investment and there's a whole bunch of assignments coming here not only in nordic but all the buildings around it so that could be a great opportunity for you because you can still pick up a unit at a thousand bucks a foot okay so you got pre-construction, you got resale, okay, residential, that's resale, and then you can play with the price range, with the property type, with the filters, and to see what you want resale, they'll, they'll show you homes and condos, and you can do assignments, and the trick of doing assignments is you go to more, then you go to the very bottom here, keyword, put assignment, now it's not going to show you all of them, but it's going to show you some, there are hundreds and hundreds of assignments, most of them are private deals, so you got to ask me, and Please don't say, Yossi, send me all your assignments. I'm not going to do it. That's not serious. I want to know where you want to buy, what's your budget, what are you looking for, and then we'll find that unit for you. So watch, assignments. Maybe in singular assignment. Add. And I'm going to zoom back out. And it's going to start finding assignments, which are on the system. Okay? On and on and on. Okay, I hope this video was good for you. There are a million people coming to the city. Are you going to be the one who can provide them with a room or are you going to be the one who are renting from these landlords? That's up to you. You'll see it.